falls under another category, right? But what's, we talked about education, right? So what's the other area that's huge? Think about it. This is probably the biggest area of a resume. Experience. Your experience, right? Your professional experience, right? Your professional slash work experience. Right? This is this is probably this is probably what is probably gonna take up like half of your page. Remember, resume can only be one page. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the limits and stuff as well, right? But your professional or your work experience is probably the most important like area, right? Especially once again, because you guys are kind of in your mid to late 20s, you guys have either worked for companies or you guys have some kind of experience, right? So let's talk about this. Let's assume that this person has had you know, he's had one job before. Like he's working at one company right now and he's looking for a new job, right? What's the very first thing that you should list? What's the very first thing you think you should list? Before, you explain the situation? So the situation is that this person has been working for a company for the last two years, right? So remember, we're, we want to make it organized, right? So under professional and work experience, What's the very first thing that you should list? You are volunteer degree. Well, it's uh, under education. What was the first thing that you listed? Okay. So you need your job title or um, your your job title. But before your job title, what do you have to say? Your job title is like uh, your, your major. Job, like finance or no, uh, even before that. Uh, your company's your, name. Yeah, exactly. Your company's name, right? Hey, your company name. This is the very first thing. Just like if you went to a really famous university, remember something. A resume is an opportunity for you to market yourself, right? You're not meeting this person, right? You're kind of, you, you know, all they see is a piece of paper with Minsu written on it, right? So that piece of paper has to tell him that Minsu is someone who's smart. Minsu is someone who's very, very talented, right? So what are the things that are going to prove that? Things like if you work for a famous company, if you went to a really famous school that's very difficult to get into, if you did well in your school, when you want the person reading the resume, right? You want them to see certain things, right? And you want them to form a story in their head about Minsu. Right, that Minsu is talented, Minsu is very intelligent, right? Minsu can do this type of work. I think I want to meet Minsu in person to see what he's like face to face, right? So your company name, that's the first step, right? That's the first piece. What to come under your company's name? Position. <coughs> exactly. Your position, right? And next to your position, what should you write, maybe? What should be, you know, there's a company could have thousands of jobs, right? But what are each of those jobs part of? Think about it. Division. Exactly. Divisions or department, right? Your position, like it could be like analyst, right? In like, you know, finance or accounting, right? Or whatever it is, right? So your division. your department. So you see how we're following the same organized structure, right? So let's, so it's like we're drilling deeper, right? We start with the company name, Hyundai. We start with the position, analyst in finance, right? What comes after that? Think about it. Success, success project for it. Exactly, though, right? Your exact experience, right? Your kind of, your exact experience. 
your exact experience, right? What I mean by that is exactly what are some of the things you did at work, right? You wrote daily reports, right? You analyzed how much money the company was spending in certain areas. Maybe you assisted your managers in creating presentations for your bosses, right? Or something like that. But also, not just your experience, right? Your experience is basically like, and you remember in education you had your grade point average, right? You have your grades. But what comes after that? Remember what we had in education? Date. Yeah, dates is also important. Date is like kind of like the fifth step, right? Your dates of employment. Your like something hours or something. Not hours, <coughs> not hours either. But achievements. Achievements. Your achievements, right? This is like your experience and your achievements are really these two things put together, right? It's kind of like you're saying, okay, <coughs> you know, I analyzed. It's basically like you know, I analyzed how much money the company was spending and helped them save $2 million or something like that. Things that, not just the things that you did, right? Because you do things that work to achieve something, but right? you have a goal. So your goals are your achievements, right? You can write even your achievements slash your goals, right? Like for example, um, one million sales or something. Yeah, exactly, that's a huge, that, that, that's a huge one, right? I helped the company achieve s growth in sales, right? Sales growth, like one million sales of a new product, right? I did a, a special, you know, did special research for the company that helped them create new products, right? These are all examples of, see how in a very short way, right? In a short sentence, you're talking about what you did, but you're also talking about what you achieved, right? What am I working towards? What am I really trying to achieve? Or what is my goal? What, what is the goal of doing this, right? So in the same type of format, right? You have your company name, right? Where you had a position that was part of a group. At that position, you had a certain amount of experience and you had achievements and goals, right? And all that happened during a certain time frame. Right? So here we've covered the two sort of <coughs> most important areas of a resume. But there's a third area. I, I mean, some people will say there's a third and a fourth area, but I, I usually like to put these two together. There's a third area. What do you think that is? Language. Which is? W what is language? You can use that other. Yeah. But you're saying. But um, but the language is a skill. That's a skill that you have, right? I like to call this skills and something else. What do you think the other piece of it is? License. Sorry. License. Licenses. Like if you have, um, if, if you if you're a accountant, you need. Well, that that would fall under education, though. Right? Think about it. If you have a CPA, if you have a degree, anything that would fall under education. But you know what it is? You know, I'll, I'll help you guys out. It's interests. Right? <coughs> Skills and interests. You know, you, it can't just be about work. I think if you like reading, if you like traveling, if you like cooking, if you like sports, right? <coughs> you should be able to kind of talk about those types of things. Because you're a person as well, right? You know, you're not just a robot, right? You're not just someone who's going to come in and do work. A lot of times companies also want someone who has interesting life experiences, right? They want someone who, you know, has a lot of different types of interests, right? Someone who's very well read, someone who likes to have fun basically, right? Especially in the in western working culture, right? It's important to have someone in the office who's also kind of not just people who work all the time, but people who kind of want to have fun together. They want to be, they want to build a community amongst the workplace, right? Because that's what makes you happy about going to work. Because 
Work isn't always fun, right? Work can be difficult, work can be stressful. But if you have a good environment at work, if you have people who have a lot of positive energy, right? It makes working a lot easier, don't you think? Like instead of having a situation where everyone just comes and everyone, no one talks to each other, everyone's just working, that's kind of depressing, isn't it? You know, because we're human beings, we're supposed to talk to each other and spend time and things like that, right? So skills and interests. Over here, you can, this is a section that you can break up into a lot, in a lot of ways. You can have like a subsection, right? You can have language skills, right? You can either have a subheading, right? You, and then you talk about your languages, right? You can have like, you know, computer skills. Computer skills. You know, this is like if you can use Microsoft Office, right? If you use Word, Excel, PowerPoint. If you know any special programming languages, right? You can put those in. And then you put in your interests. It's like a habit. Yeah, like your hobbies. Like your hobbies. What do you like to do? Shinsuke, what do you like to do? What are some of your hobbies? Basketball. You like basketball, right? So you can put that down. Basketball. Minsu. What are some of your hobbies? Friends plus. <laughs> Sports, right? And then cool. Sports. Playing instruments. Musical instruments, right? But which instrument do you play? Clarinet. Clarinet? Clarinet. Yeah. Okay. Clarinet. do you have any other interests? Drum. Drums, right? Clarinet. Drums. Right? So why is this important? Because once again, you're not there. Right now you're that piece of paper. You know, this person has to be able to say, oh cool, he plays drums and he plays clarinet. Me too. A lot of times the person who is going to interview you, a lot of times they remember you, right, more if there's something that you do that's really interesting, right? I have a, I know a guy who's climbed all seven of the highest peaks in the world, Kilimanjaro, Mount Fuji, like obviously Mount Everest, right? He's climbed all seven peaks. So one of his interests on his resume is mountain climbing. You know, so that's something that's like really, really interesting. And how can he write like his... Uh, that he climbed all seven yeah. peaks? Can he add in yeah, you can. section or? Um, yeah, you, you can even write. I mean, if I were him and that, I don't know what Neil, how, how Neil does it, but I would probably write something like mountain climbing, right? And then within parentheses, within brackets, you can probably write like, you know, uh, climbed seven major peaks, or like, you know, peak. peak, a peak is a way of saying that, like, you know, it's a mountain, right, it's the summit of a mountain, so climb seven major peaks, or there's different ways of saying it, saying it right, so, you know, the, this shows that not only does he like mountain climbing, right, but he's really, really serious about it, so this is something that obviously stands out, right, this is like, oh, wow, this guy's climbed Everest, it's like the person could be like, I want to interview him just to find out what it was like to climb Mount Everest, right? So that's just an example, right? So you just kind of, in the same organized fashion, here are your skills, and this is your interests, right? Once again, you're following a format, right? That's really, really easy to, to kind of, for a person to see. Once again, remember the 8 to 10 second rule. You only have a small amount of time. You know, obviously they're going to look at your resume over and over, but many different people are going to look at your resume, right? He's not, it's not just one person, right? It's going to be like, you know, maybe eight, you know, just five, six people who are going to see your resume. So all of them, in a really short amount of time, they should be able to kind of, you know, give you, have a very quick, good understanding of you and your credentials in that time, right? Can we type? Type? Can you type? What do you mean, can you type? Like using uh, computers.